Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape. Transcribed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are in the heart of a Philippine jungle, searching out an Igorot village whose people are practiced in savagery and headhunting. While your civilized companion is coldly making his plan to see that the first head taken will be your own. Listen now as Escape brings you Kathleen Height's exciting story, A Good Thing. This time, Matthew found me in a filthy flea bag of a hotel room in Manila. Before that, it had been Shanghai, Rangoon, Cape Town. Name your port of call. Come on, boy. Come around. Come on. Come on, Dan. Dan. Come on, snap two. You really tied one on this time, didn't you? Well, yeah. we've done it before. Yeah. You know. Here, boy. Catch. Look at it. Easy. Easy, boy. Easy. Yeah. Down, down, down. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's you. How long have you been like this? Uh, this time. Too, too long. You found me. <laughs> you always send for me, Dan, in your own unique fashion. I send for money. <laughs> Give me the towel over there. <laughs> I always check on my investments. <clears throat> next time, just send the money. There won't be a next time here. <clears throat> this time you're going with me. Yeah. <sighs> You know I'm not. Well, I think you'll get a kick out of this, John. I'm going up in the back country of Nueva Quija. Get material for my book. No expedition, no fancy trappings. Just you, me, and the Igorots. It's just you and the Igorots. No, it'll be good for you, Dan. We'll get you in shape. Rest up a bit before we strike out. <clears throat> and we'll get all that stuff boiled out of your system. Might even get you to quit hating yourself. I know, you think you hate me. Maybe you do. All I know is you're my brother, and I'm not going to let you go completely to pieces. <coughs> makes you feel great, doesn't it? <coughs> it's there when I want it. Yeah. And it never talks back. It's printed on the label. Sixteen full ounces, no platitudes. Do you have any clothes except those on your back? The travel light. Any, any debts to square... Uh... Women to placate before we clear out of here? You crazy fool. You really think I'm going with you? Might make it as far as Japan tonight. We'll put up with Cass for a while. He'd like that. Cass? Mm-hmm. You mean Cass Bledsoe? Sure. He's still around. Must be in his middle 60s by now. He's fatter than ever and richer. I see him a couple of times a year, I guess. Thought maybe you'd forgotten Cass. It's been a long time. It had been a long time. But Cass Bledsoe was one guy I'd never forget. I used to hang around his plantation near Gapan when I was a kid. My old man was an engineer in the islands. I knew a good thing when I saw it, even then. And Cass had it made, but good. A lot of cheap native labor, all the money in the world. <laughs> That's what I call a good thing. That's what I'd look for all my life. Brother Matthew... I hated his insides. I always had. It wasn't so bad when he was off somewhere, but when he was around, I thought I'd blow my core. 
I hated him that much. He had me this time, though. I, I was flat broke, and he knew it. I had to go with him. You see, no one's done exactly the kind of study I want to do on the Igorots. The, uh... Oh, I was the, the lecture can wait till we get to Cass's. Come on, Dan. Admit it's not a bad idea. I think it's a lousy idea. <laughs> Matt, tell Cass all about it. Yeah, explain it to me. I've lived on the fringe of the back country for years. I never gave a hoot what makes the eager roads tick. <laughs> yeah. You stubborn old baboon, you still won't give a hoot even if I do explain it to you. No, now <laughs> I'm interested. I really want to know. Do you know, Daniel? I'm like you. I don't give a hoot. <laughs> Dan and I will have to do a lot of talking together before we go in. Well, briefly, the... Mm, this is good. The, yeah. the thing that's intriguing about the Igorots is this. On the one hand, they're a tribe of highly developed skills, uh, mining principally. They live in orderly villages, and practice monogamy, and generally lead productive, peaceful lives. But Pass uh, me some. Yeah, here. Oh. Yeah. Well, on the other hand, some of these same people are thoroughly pagan and practice headhunting. And you want to mm. know why, mm. got it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Partly, I want to know where the schism is in the tribe, you know... What makes one group completely diverse from the other? There's a link of development that's just missing, and I want to know what it is and why it is. And just the two of you are going in there to find out? Well, I've got a theory that large expeditions marching in, setting up camp and equipment, and, well, they just simply drive the natives farther into the brush. But Daniel and I can go in, make friends with them, and very quietly observe them. They'll get used to us after a while, and I, I, I really believe that we can come up with some important data. Anyway, it's worth a try, isn't it, Dan? That's what you keep saying. I know, and I don't understand. What gets inside a man that makes him blaze trails, risk his life to track down this data for a book no one but professors will give a hang about? You, Daniel, what drives you to do it? Matthew. He thinks the other pagans and I will get along just fine. Oh, don't misunderstand me, uh, Pastor Pineapple, will you, Matthew? Mm -hmm. I admire him. Oh, thank you. Whatever it is. Matthew here will tell you. Every time I see him, I marvel at his plans. I listen and admire him all the more, but I never quite understand. All I know is I wish I'd had some of the quality when I was young enough to do something about it. <laughs> You're always making me sound like a bloody hero, Cass. I'm not at all this... You drive, you call it, so something, well, you're born with it. You, Well, you're, you're born with it. Money! Huh? <laughs> Money! <laughs> and an inherited capacity for doing nothing <laughs> in a very elaborate fashion. That's what's wrong. Everything was always too dad blamed easy. Is that bad? Do things have to be tough? What's wrong with money, especially if someone just hands it to you? Man needs challenge in his life. I never had any. But thank heavens I can appreciate when I see it. I'd turn this whole blasted plantation over to Matthew in a minute. Just to feel as, as if I'd done one worthwhile thing in my fat life. But he won't hear of it. <laughs> and he calls me stubborn. <laughs> I'd lose money for you. You know it. You would not. Oh, You'd have a hundred innovations going before the first week was out. Ever see him tackle anything and not come out on top, didn't you? Never in my whole life. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I wouldn't think much of you if you're any different than you are. And if they'd give me the years back and let me have another try... You wouldn't do it any differently than you have. <laughs> All right. I think you're right. But I know this much. I'll never turn this place over to a bum like me, either. <laughs> I'll let YOLO run it first. <laughs> Uh, where's one? I'd like some coffee. Oh, yeah, yeah. Guess we all need some. One! Yolo, uh, chef, coffee, sir. Yolo, bring fine coffee. Oh, good, Yolo. And don't forget... Also bring brandy. Plenty brandy. Good boy. All round, huh? Yeah, yes, yeah sir. please. Thanks, Yolo. Hi, Yolo. How's the reading coming? Yolo, very fine read. Thank you, sir. Good. Oh, this is my brother, Yolo. Daniel, this is Cass's prized possession. Pleased uh, to meet you, sir. Very pleased. Hello, Yolo. Yolo, read about Mr. Dan. 
in a place uh, lion's den. The what? <laughs> lion's den. Oh. <laughs> Tell Daniel what you think of Matthew, Doro. Mr. Matt, uh, very fine man, sir. And uh, what do you think of me? Uh, Mr. Cass, very rich man. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Daniel, I've raised his ingrate as if he were my son. And he thinks more of Matthew than he does of me. <laughs> The love feast went on and on and on. Every time Cass took another slug of brandy, he'd hand the plantation over to Matthew again and warn the boy, just kept handing it back. I had time. We were going to stay on with Cass for a few days. And, hard as it was on my insides, it looked smart to come off as a carbon copy of Brother Matthew. The drunker he got, the more old brandy bloat began to look like a good thing to me. A real good thing. I was a model boy those next few days. Now, if we start out early enough in the morning, Yolo thinks we can make it to... Yeah, yeah, to this clearing right here. It's about tomorrow night. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. Well, what does Yolo know about? Well, this country's the back of his hand. Hasn't Cass told you? Yolo's an Igoro. His family still lives back up in the hills. Okay, okay. So we're here tomorrow night. Yeah. When do we hit the first village? Well, about mid-afternoon the second day. We'll set up headquarters there and work out of there as soon as we know the territory and make a few friends. Mm -hmm. Sounds real cozy. All right, guess we're set then. Mm hmm. Dan? Yeah. You're doing a good job. I'm proud of you. Thanks. It's a long time since we've really been brothers. It'll be a good thing, this trip. Yeah. I think so. There you are you still away? Yeah, come on in, Cass. Come in. I couldn't wake, Matthew. Oh, no wonder, no wonder. Thought we'd just have a little drink together. To the Igoros, huh? Dan will have a nightcap with you, Cass. I want to talk to Yolo again and then hit the sack. All right, all right, all right. See you in the morning, Cass. Yeah? yeah. Night, Dan. Yeah, night. You, uh... Sure, you need that drink, Cass? <laughs> you sound just like him. Pretty sure I don't need it, boy. Pretty sure I don't need most of them, I take. Pretty sure. Here. Okay. Eager oats? So you. You and Matthew. Safe journey. Safe. Thanks. <clears throat> I don't know you like I know him. But you've got something. I can tell. Something. Doers. That's what you are. Amount to something. Never did myself. Look, you're pretty hard on yourself, aren't you? Guts. You've got guts, both of you. Guts. Never had any myself. Never. You've done all right without them. Listen, boy. <coughs> Listen. Don't let anything happen to Matthew, like a son to me. Don't know you like I know him. I know this, though. <laughs> You're a bad one. <laughs> a lot of devil in you, like me. Uh, Matthew, uh, just like a son to me. Man needs a son. And when you get back, if... You get back. I. I'm a. I. Well. It was like carrying a beach whale, packing him off to his room, loading him into bed. I made him comfortable. If the drunken old fool was shopping around for a son, I'd make it easy for him to find one. Matthew and Cass had one more good-natured exchange before we left the next morning. Cass killed me. He didn't have a hangover. So be my way or I won't let you go, Matthew. If you're idiot enough to go in and pay court to headhunters, I'll at least have the satisfaction of knowing I sent you in good hands. But Cass, you can't. Yolo's your right hand. You need him here. Just let him lead you to his old village. Then he'll come back. Won't you, Yolo? Yes, sir. Make very fast with Yolo to lead. No trail, very good. 
Also help make me friend. Well, you'd be a big help, Yolo, sure, but... Matthew, uh, I think it's a good idea if Cass can spare him a few days. I certainly can. Besides, it'll make me feel as if I'm doing something for you. At least you can yeah, all do right. it. Uh, yeah, all, all right, but you hurry back to Cass as soon as we're safely in the village, Yolo. Yes, sir. Yolo understand. Well, right. that's better. And you, Daniel... Any young man who can lift me in my full load of brandy is worth having around. Anytime Matthew doesn't need you, let me know. Well, thanks, Cass. I'll remember that. We will return to escape in just a moment, but first... Highway safety is a state of mind, yes, the state of the driver's mind. His viewpoint about taking chances on his own and others' lives governs whether or not our roadways are safe or unsafe. With warm weather returning, and this a holiday weekend in many parts of the nation, be cautious, be extremely cautious. Watch your state of mind when behind the steering wheel. Your life depends on it. Others do too. And now, back to Escape. Yolo picked a path forward through the thick undergrowth, and I kept looking back with the marked signs that would lead me out again when the time came. By evening, Yolo had nosed out a little clearing. We made camp there. I watched Yolo in the firelight. His eyes kept darting out into the night, his head cocked, listening. Near as I can tell, we must be about halfway between Gimba and Bunga Bun, Daniel. What does that mean? Just that tomorrow afternoon should see us in Yolo's home village. You did a good job, Yolo. We wouldn't be this far without you. Uh, Yolo, very slow. Tomorrow, do better. You sleep. Yolo, watch and listen. Yolo, what kind of sound does a headhunter make? No sound. All very quick. Mr. Dan have no fear. No? Why? Not have a fine head like Mr. Matt. <laughs> That's a dubious honor. Headhunter think soul in head. See, pine head, cut off. Make hunter very smart fellow. Put head in ground. Make crops grow. Well, they won't come after us unless we trouble them. Don't worry about it, Dan. Get some sleep. Yeah. Apparently, I don't have a thing to worry about. Yolo routed us out and on the trail early the next morning. I got so I could sense the path. Look around at the brush, know where the footing was. We made good time, and by afternoon we could see the village ahead. As we moved closer, Yolo seemed somehow to become warier. His head snapped in all directions at the slightest sound. But finally, he led us into the clear, flanked by huts on all sides. What few natives we saw backed away and disappeared at the sight of us. They're more frightened of us than we are of them, Dan. Smile. My smile, show them we're friendly. Over there. What my family? We go there. You go on. Tell them we're friends. Well, he'll know what to do. What we do is much more important. Just smile now. And don't panic. In here. This hut. You go in. Hut all empty. You go in. Come on, Dan. I hope you know what you're doing. They'll see we didn't come to harm them. Once they're sure of that, they'll come back. Come on inside. Yeah. Just keep Yolo handy, that's all. Don't worry about Yolo. Yolo! Yolo, come back here! Look at that. Run out on us first chance he gets. Come back here, you dirty... Come here, fool! Dan! Let him go. He did his job. Now just calm down. What are you, a brave but man? It's just that I've been through this kind of thing before. Natives always run fast. They may steal back to take a look at you. If you convince him you didn't come to destroy him, you're all right. Yeah, well, I think you're nuts. Well, I'm not. Now, right, come on, lie down. Take it easy, Juan. I'll keep watch. Dan, we don't have a thing to worry about. I didn't expect to sleep, but I must have. Because when I opened my eyes again, it was dusk. 
brush was alive with sounds, but there was another sound, a rumble of voices out in the clearing. Voices that seemed to come closer to the hut. Matthew stood in the doorway, looking out. You awake, Dan? Yeah, yeah. Some of the natives are coming back. It's all right. You stay inside. I'll go out and meet them. Don't you let them in here. No, they won't come in. Just stay where you are. And don't make it tough for us. Uh, white man, one big friend. You see? Good. Good. The white man, no knife, no gun. One big friend. Want to meet chief. Meet chief. Uh, uh, head fellow. Make friends. I stood there with blank faces as Matthew did his great white father act. I took it as long as I could. They blazed away over there. They ran, but I just couldn't stop shooting. Stop it! Stop it, you crazy fool! Stop it! I got him out of here, didn't I? Stop it! I give me that gun to him. Oh, what's the matter with you? If you hadn't done anything, they wouldn't have hurt you. You're nuts! I told you I thought it was a lousy idea. I didn't ask to come here, you know. Give me back my gun. Oh, here. You sent us back days and weeks. I suppose you meant to, but I've worked a long time to get ready for this trip, and you just blew it with half a dozen bullets that should never have been fired. All right, all right. Tell me all about it on the way back to Cassis. We're not going back. We're not sitting here. No, we'll have to go on to the next village and hope we make it before the news of what you did reaches there. No, I know you're nuts. If you're smart, you'll clear out of here with me. Dan, Dan, now come on. Just settle down. All right, now. We've made a bad start. We'll start over. I'm going back. Get used to it. You can help me if you stay here. I don't want to help you. If you'd give it a real chance, this could do you a lot of good, too. Dan, I've got to stay here. I want to. This book's important to me. Don't tell me what's good for me. All right, all right, Dan. Have it your way. Go back. I can't stop you. That's right. (laughs) You know... You know, I, I think you're right, brother. I think you've got to stay here. Well, that's one thing we agree on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I sort of like thinking of you out here. <laughs> it's such a stinking place. All right, Dan. You've made your point. I think I'll check the supplies. You never get that far. Uh, <laughs> Miss Matt. One fine head, huh? What? <laughs> Good Lord, uh, Dan. Oh, don't! Dan! 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 Oh, Dan! Ah! I'll write your book, brother. I felt good. Good, good. Because now all I all I had to hate was the idea of him. My nerve held until I got to the part about his head. I I couldn't do it. All night long I I tried to find a nerve, but I, I couldn't. By morning I picked him up, hauled him out into the brush. There wasn't a sign of life. I dug a grave, crammed him into it, pulled the thicket back over it. <laughs> would make a good story. Everyone would figure him for a hero's death, and that's how he got his uh, at the hands of headhunters. <laughs> Two days later, Matthew's weary brother, Bramble scratched and sick with grief, stumbled into Cass's plantation and told the sad news. Poor Dero. Must have been horrible. Oh, it was awful. You don't know how awful. Now take it easy, son. I know how you feel. But it was his life. He was doing what he believed in. Uh, I want to go back. I want to get a party and go back. Clean them all out for what they did. I know. But you won't. I won't let you. I tried to stop Matthew. I've got to stop you. I... I'm so tired, Matthew. And Jess. you'll get rest. A long rest. Then we'll talk about plans. Don't try to think now. No. No, it's no use, Nick. I can't can't help him now. 
Any more than I could help a man. Don't beat yourself, son. You did everything you could. I thought Yolo was the answer. But I guess not. Yolo. He ran as soon as we hit the village. And he didn't show up when the trouble started? No, no. He headed back here like he was supposed to. I told him to stay in the background. He was supposed to be there when you and Matthew needed him. He isn't here? He didn't come back? Uh, may have reverted to type. They do sometimes. I thought I was giving my boys some protection. Cassie, I think I'll go lie down. I, I feel sick. Sure, sure, son. Sure. Sir, Cass! Yola! Cass! Yola, come back! Yola! Yola! Yola. 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 You promised to watch after them! Yola, dear, Mr. Cass! You're not there all the time. Oh, you lie. You're lying. You're lying. I saw you run. No, Mr. Dan. No. You're to stay. You're to bring back Mr. Matt. Come. You see. But his head. Daniel, you said. Head, all right. Body dead. All shot. Mr. Dan, no? All shot. Under the direction of Anthony Ellis, Escape has brought you A Good Thing by Kathleen Height, starring Anthony Barrett as Daniel and John Daner as Matthew. Featured in the cast were Herb Butterfield as Cass and Jack Crucian as Yolo. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week... You are living in a new and fabulous land, surrounded by all that is generous and kind, while your hosts... Heedless of your pleas, are planning, as is the custom of their country, to kill you in a strange and terrible manner. So listen next week when Escape brings you a fantastic adventure in The Voyages of Sinbad. <laughs> Tomorrow night, CBS Radio Suspense stars Ronald Coleman in Vision of Death. It's a thriller-diller well calculated to keep you at the edge of your chairs from beginning to end. Also tomorrow night and most of these same CBS radio stations, don't miss the initial performance on the Lux Summer Theater. William Holden stars in Maxwell Anderson's High Tour to raise the curtain on Lux Summer Theater's new series. This is Roy Rowan speaking. Remember, America now rides to the tune of 25 million auto radios and listens most to the CBS radio network.